Roll up your sleeves, pour yourself a drink, because this is Off the Cuff. I'm Dan. And I'm Kyle. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. Yet again, we're back at you with a brand new film we just saw in theaters. Um, and just in time for Mother's Day, we saw the the crazy uh, the crazy mother-daughter film, uh, Snatched. Snatched. Where guess what? Amy Schumer talks about her. Snatch. Snatch. Um, but... Before we get into that, because that's going to be a hell of a lot of fun, um, we were slightly absent for Off the Cuff last week, and we just posted a good old uh, archived episode of the podcast to kind of keep things rolling, because I was swamped in shit last week, a lot of shit was going on, um, and we were just trying to pull through with what we had, but in the meantime, since we weren't able to do a regular podcast and talk about you know, what we've been watching, catch you guys up on you know things you might want to recommend to each other and the viewers and listeners out there in the internet space world space jam whatever you want to say yeah. um we're gonna get into that so daniel do you have anything you have been watching tv or reading whatever you've been into what's what's new okay well actually there's quite a few random things to talk about uh first of all silicon valley's back going on uh, oh, so dude. i've watched a few episodes of that i'm not gonna no spoilers no spoilers, okay? no spoilers. No spoilers. but great um, show fantastic show love that show yeah good show totally love that show um what else have i seen oh i've been I'm been, into it. I've been meaning to watch um, the principal or vice principals. That's with Danny McBride and one of the guys Ice from Needful Eight. Oh, no, oh. Uh, Danny McBride and let's see, Samuel L. Jackson. No, um, Walter Goggins. Oh, dang. All right. That <laughs> guy. Because when I think Needful Eight, I think Walter Goggins every time. <laughs> 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 all right. Is that a TV show? It's a TV show. It's an HBO TV show. Okay. okay. I think they've finished their first season now. I think so, I've seen a trailer for this. Oh, wow. I watched a link. couple clips. Actually, Bill Murray's in it, too. Classic Murray. If you guys yeah. are on the chive, peep game on Bill Murray. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Never been on there, but I hear he's a bit of an icon over there. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's an icon over if there. Any, the if we have any listeners out there who um, are into the chive, set up a TSV chive account or something. I'm We'd, just glad it's cut, not called the dill, like the dill seasoning. Thank God it's a chive. You know. All right. I don't know what that's alluding to. I don't like dill seasoning on popcorn. Wowzers. Okay. Fun fact. That's that's your Dan fact of the week, right? That's there, a guy. Dan fact of the week. Doesn't yeah. like honestly, he's crazy, but whatever. Anyway, so the show's good though. Uh, like vice principals. Yeah. No, I'm meaning to watch oh, it. I'm, okay, very, I'm okay, getting sorry. stoked on it. I watched oh, a couple you saw of some clips. clips. Oh, yeah. I thought you were saying you saw. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. No, just a couple of clips. Um, there's a. Jeez, oh, I watched. Oh, I watched Caddyshack. Just Great today. Film. That's a good movie. I love Caddyshack. That <laughs> a is a, a classic, fantastic I'd say. film. Yeah. That's one of my dad's all time favorite movies. Oh, dude, Bill Murray's so fucking good in it. He's like, there's a scene where he's uh, he's like eyeing up some older ladies and, and, and talk, talking about their asses kind of thing. Classic as, Murray. As, as he's taking shots at like some flower, like some chrysanthemums, <laughs> and just blowing the, the, the bloom right off the top of these flowers. It's fucking hilarious. I love it. It's like there's that big string of like really good like like slapstick comedies from the 80s. Like your, your Caddyshack, your Animal House, things like that. Yeah. That was good shit. But totally. And Chevy Chase is in. And Chevy Chase is actually really good. I liked him in uh, Caddyshack. Uh, hot take. I don't really like Chevy Chase a whole lot. Oh, really? Like, I think he's not very good. I like. <laughs> he's always just got a. Re- I have very little reference uh, material. Like I've seen very little with him. There's a show where he's a detective or something. I'm thinking Chevy Chase, like from Community and like Saturday Night Live and like National Lampoons, like that Chevy Chase. Yeah, like the yeah, I'm not into that Chevy guy. Chase. I don't like him. Not he a seems big Chevy really, Chase guy. He seems like the opposite of uh, Adam Sandler to me, like a likable but like goofy dude. He seems like a stuck up kind of asshole to me. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm not into the guy. Put him on I the see, list. Yeah. Put him right next to uh, Mark Ruffalo. Wow, that much, that hard. I'm, I mean, I he's just, next to Mark fucking Ruffalo. I'll say right now, he's not a kind of guy that comes to mind, but when he does, I'm like, oh, I fucking hate that guy. Wow. Yeah. Damn. So, okay, hate to the movie like, here, there's but... for sure a couple of things that I do like him in. Oh yeah. What, what well, it? I'm not. I'm not gonna jump right out and say. Um, well, I do like that. Whatever fucking lame detective 
uh, movie he does. It's like corny, but I, I like it for some reason. I don't know. Maybe it's because it's a movie I saw with my dad a long time ago. But also Caddyshack. I really like him in Caddyshack. Even after just watching it today, I was like, fuck. Chevy Chase okay, maybe, okay, I'll give him. A, I'll give Caddyshack another go. But anything I've seen Chevy Chase in, Chevy Chase in, in the past like ten to fifteen years, it's terrible. I haven't seen him in, in a lot of SNL, but he was well, supposedly that's... really good in SNL. I think, right? It's like any. I don't get into this right now. It's like everyone's supposed okay. to be good in SNL. Okay, <laughs> all right. I don't want to get into it right now. I don't want to get into it right now. Like, okay, well, fill me. What else, what have you been watching recently? Then? Um, I haven't watched too much lately, but I did watch. You watch this too. Uh, the new Adam Sandler movie. The yes. Sandy Wexler movie. Yeah, it's on Netflix. I think it was just a straight to Netflix deal. Yeah, he has like I think two more or something like that. He made he had a deal like a bunch to oh. be made just for Netflix. Like there was Ridiculous Six, The Do Over, I think it's called, and um, yeah, then this one Sandy Wexler. I'm pretty sure he has at least one or two more coming out. But there's actually a uh, Adam Sandler movie I'm generally excited for. Uh, Noah Baumbach is directing a movie with uh, Ben Stiller and Adam Sandler. Noah Baumbach did, like, Squid and the Whale and, like, Francis Ha yeah. and um, a lot of mumblecore kind of shit. Actually, Squid and the Whale is one I've been really meaning to watch, but uh, I haven't. Peep Game, that's a great movie. I got it if you want to borrow it. I got, yeah. I got, the, I got the divid. It, but, um, uh, it does look vaguely depressing. Oh, definitely. Yeah. It is. But it's a great flick. Um, no, ba- no Baumbach's a really good director, actually. But so I'm kind of interested, interested to see what him yeah. and Sandler come across. But I guess the only notable thing I may, might mention that I saw was I watched an anime <laughs> called your name oh that seems and like random. it's no. it's a little random but it was actually because like i'm fucking i love letterbox it's my shit check us out on letterbox letterbox.com slash tsv you'll find us there <laughs> um it was the highest rated film on letterbox of 2016 was your name yeah an animated movie and i actually i had heard about this movie it was kind of, i think i don't think it got an oscar nomination but it was like it was very highly regarded kind of thing you know it was, it's one of those right. i would say it's the only other anime i could think of Besides, like, a Studio Ghibli movie that's got, like, some North American attention kind of thing. Okay. In the past while, at least. Anyways. It's fantastic. Really, really, really good movie. Um, it's one of those movies that's kind of, like, really... Uh, it may not be for everyone because it has, like, certain, like, cultural elements, like, Japanese cultural elements that people might find a little uncomfortable or cheesy. Okay. And I think they might turn people away, and I don't want to exactly say what... But I think if you can look past that or just kind of, you know, accept for what it is, I think it's a really, really good flick. It's kind of like a body swapping. Think of a really, really good version of Freaky Friday, in a way. Okay, but an animated. <laughs> but animated, yeah, like an animated. So, an- yeah, animated Lindsay Lohan. In I wish. Your name. I, man, if only. It's not two women, though. It's a guy and a girl. And that's kind of what I'm oh, trying okay. to get at, where it's a little, there's some like things that are a little bit, people might find uncomfortable that they kind of like joke about. Oh, I see. Okay. But, like um, discovering your body all over again kind of scene. Exactly. Type thing? Exactly. All right. right. And, but honestly, the movie handles it really well and in like a comedic, but not like a raunchy way. Oh, okay. So not, the, not like snatched. No, not at all like Snatch. And that's right. Like, we'll get into that. Um, but we can probably get into it real. What, what else? Soon. Well, I see that on your list of personal shoppers there. I know we talked about that talk a little about while that, ago. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else. I feel like there was something else I saw recently that I wanted to bring up. Oh, shit. I saw Rocky IV. I watched oh, Rocky yeah, that's IV. right. Yeah. Um, Rocky IV was um, uh, fucking amazing, actually. If you're going to watch any of the Rocky movies, watch Rocky IV, hands down. Because the first three movies are recapped within Rocky IV. Rocky IV, I think, is an hour and a half, and it spends exactly, if I, like, I tried to time it, around 35 to 40 minutes recapping the first three films and also doing monologues and montages of Rocky IV within Rocky IV. Oh, sick. So there's barely any actual film in it. But yet, you know what fucking works? I'm into Rocky IV. Shouts out to Rocky IV. <laughs> All right. Peep game on Respect. that. Respect. Um, well, is there anything that you uh, want to watch? I think I want... Oh, God. So much I want to watch. I want to watch... Like, Col- what, what would be, like, some of the top ones? Okay, well, there's this movie coming out. I think it is out, actually, in our area. It's called Colossal. It's with Anne Hathaway. Um, it kind of looks weird. Oh, yeah. It's where she, like, controls, like, a kaiju monster kind of thing. Yes. Uh... It's like one of those. They mi- yeah, they their bodies mimic each other. Some it's one of those. Like yeah, it's one of those movies where I have no idea who it's made for. It just seems like a really fucking weird idea. Yeah, it seems very out there. I don't. I can't say I understand it but, at all. I mean, hell, that's something I can get into. I'm down for something a little bit out there and wacky. Where is it playing? It's playing the Roxy right now. We'll probably, oh, we'll probably okay. go see it, is what I'm trying to get at. Right, okay. It'll probably be next week's Off the Cuff, actually, to okay. be honest with you. It's playing at the Roxy, <laughs> but it's not playing at the Galaxy. 
No, 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 no. Well, it's a. a Does it not get a wide release? No, it's or? it's a it's a Sundance film. It's a it's a limited release. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. I've got a wider release in the States. I think it did, actually. But in Canada... Anne Hathaway. She hasn't done anything since The Nanny Diaries. (sighs) That you're thinking of, Scarlett Jones. She hasn't done anything since uh, My Little Princess Goes to School or something. What's that show where she becomes a princess? Or are you thinking The Princess Diaries? The Princess Diaries. One and two. Right. Not The Nanny Diaries. She's the the princess. Um, she She was in Les Mis like four years ago and she won an Oscar. That's probably the most... Thing she's oh, she, wow. I didn't she's even best, know that. Best supporting actress, I'm pretty sure. Or best actress, one of the two. Best supporting. Yeah. Anyways, um, one movie I will mention, though, that I saw is, like, right now in our local area, there's, like, a, been a David Lynch, like, marathon festival kind of going on. And I watched Blue Velvet for the first time. Shit's good. Yeah. I like Blue, Blue Velvet. Yeah, it's one of my favorite David Lynch ones. I mean, I it's the only one I haven't seen, actually. That's why I really wanted to go see in the theater. I actually saw Eraser in the theater, too, just because I was like, fuck it, when am I going to have another chance to see Eraser Red yeah. on the big screen? So that was cool. Um, honestly, overrated film, but we'll get into that another day, maybe. I haven't seen <laughs> Eraserhead at Eraser all. Eraserhead is the kind of movie where it, it's important to exist so that other films like could come it. after it kind right. of thing. And I, th- I think that's totally fine. I think it deserves all the praise it gets, but uh, at the end of the day, it's a weird student art film as far as I'm concerned. Gotcha. Anyways, Blue Velvet, though. I'm hot take. That might be my favorite David Lynch film. I think it's fucking amazing. It's really, it blew yeah. my mind. Well, I think Lost Highway is really up there for me. You're into the David Cage. You're like, or I uh, sorry, I mean, uh, fuck, what's it? No, Mul- Mulholland, Mulholland Drive. Drive I think I do like Mulholland Drive. Uh, that was my favorite one before Blue Velvet. Before I saw yeah. Blue Velvet, hundred um, percent. Anyways, though, let's. Uh, Enough with all the fun stuff. <laughs> let's uh, maybe get into... Oh, let's, i got to look this fucking film up really let's quick. Let's jump into Snatch. Let's crawl right up Amy Schumer's Snatch and gross. start talking about her Snatch. So gross. I wanted to fuck a dude, but my vagina was dirty. Wash it in the bathroom. That's gross. I'm totally going to cut that part, but... Okay, great. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. That is... Gr- I mean, cut as in, like, cut it out and keep using the portion where you... Anyways. <laughs> so, right. Uh, yeah, dude. This movie... I don't know. Did you even see any promotion for this? Any trailers for this? Anything like that? Um, no. I might. I I like to watch trailers a lot, so sometimes I'll come across trailers. But yeah, I figured you may. Something, have. Yeah. So I might have seen this trailer, but I can't say I really recalled it. Matter of fact, when you told me the name of the movie earlier uh, that we were thinking of checking out, I didn't even know what the fuck it was. I had to look it up. Great. That's always a good sign for a film. Yeah, so. <laughs> well, I mean, not every film. I mean, some movies are really obscure, but when we're going, we went to like our, our mainstream film cinema. I don't know what you would call it. Our first run mainstream film cinema. And this was playing and it's on Mother's Day. And I thought maybe on Mother's Day, because this movie was obviously intended for a mother-daughter audience and to be released and coincided with oh, Mother's Day. Do you think? Oh, uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's crude. I don't think necessarily every mother-daughter will enjoy it, but... I, I would say if there was a demographic, it'd be that. Right. Um, like and, maybe it was made for Amy Schumer and her mom. Like I need to look into Katie Dippold. Dippold, I don't know. I've never heard of this person. Oh, God. She was a writer for Parks and Recreation, which is depressing. I do really like Parks and And she also Rec- wrote The Heat, which looked terrible. I never saw that with, excuse me, Sandra Bullock and Melissa McCarthy. Oh, I did see that. That looked um, god-awful. Sick poster, though, on this wiki page right here, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a great is, poster. If you guys have a chance, go look up the heat um, poster. Pretty fire. I just need to look it up, because this is some of the worst writing I think I've ever seen in a long, long time. Oh, wait. Am I seeing... Uh there's a f- recent Ghostbusters movie, oh, spy shit. movie. Oh, shit. She wrote looks Ghostbusters. Like, it looks like some of these, uh, like I'm starting to see a, a common theme of all uh, the same actors and actresses in these movies. Do you think she's writing that other one that we saw trailer for before this with like uh, Scarlett Johansson and um, that girl from Workaholics? It was like the honest day get kind of thing. Oh yeah, that seems honestly like a film probably made. because uh, yeah. So uh, the trailer Kyle's describing is about what is it? The best night ever or a girls' night out or uh, yeah? It's like they're they about they to get extend- married, so they go to Vegas for like her stay get. And yeah, they try to have the best night ever, I guess. Yeah, and they kill a guy, and uh, this is not a spoiler, by the way. It's, it's in the trailer. trailer. <laughs> they kill a dude, and they have to figure it out. Sounds terrible, honestly. It looked it looked very bad. Yeah. Um, uh, also, keep in mind that it's these these movies are all basically not catered to us. No, we're the exact opposite demographic. And I'll be honest, I tried. Much. I tried my best to. Um, 
Well, I don't see, we're we're talking a little bit of smack on it, but I gotta say, there's parts we laughed. I oh, laughed. Yeah. Well, no, yeah, that's like the, all these yeah. things, though, right? Like, there's so many. I don't know. Like, you can put a good joke into any movie. Do you know what I'm saying? That's that's. Yeah. I, I really do think that, and I think some jokes land better than others. And I don't know. I was telling you, there's one character in this film. Uh, he's like the dopey brother. Um, he's the kind of character I would like love in almost any other movie. Right. But in this movie. He was only like half as funny to me. Wait, okay. So before we jump into the movie, because <laughs> you want to give a plot well, yeah, let's like, just a very vague one. Okay, okay. I'm just gonna reel uh, right. uh, reel it off really quick. Um, daughter broke. Boyfriend breaks up with her. Has already booked uh, a trip that's non refundable. Ends up taking her mom. They solve their problems on the trip, but they get snatched, uh, kidnapped, and they have to find their way back to each other and back home. I so, think that's it, right? That's it. That's pretty much it. And they're they're stranded in what was it, Puerto Rico, or uh, Ecuador? Ecuador. But they ended up in Colombia and then Bodega. Sure. I mean, like this movie. I, on, I don't. Uh, yeah. My, my, my geography is terrible. I apologize to any uh, Ecuadorian people out there thinking, "What the fuck are you talking about, Kyle?" But it's it's the kind of yeah. thing where this movie jumps back and forth so much that like I couldn't really take a lot of notice of what was going on in what moment, like. It goes, what was the budget on this thing? $42 million. That's Sandler budget. Like, I'm, I'm, I am I'm always smelled Sandler over this film. Yeah, there is a Sandler element here. Like, you got to think. starting to think that Amy Schumer is like the next Sandler. Um, we just don't know how nice she is. Apparently this We movie, know Sandler's pretty nice. Oh God. You know, I think Sandler seems like a nice enough dude, but this is the kind of, enough, this is the kind of movie where, sure, the, it wasn't written by Amy Schumer, but it felt like it was written by Amy Schumer. Like... Or at least written for her, yeah. perhaps, or someone like her. Well, uh, sorry, what was the name of the... the Katie DePold, DePold. Katie about, DePold, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm starting to see, like, Amy Schumer's brand of comedy just fitting into other previous movies that she's written. So, like, uh, Melissa, like, Melissa, well, I, I kind of like Melissa McCarthy, I think. She's all right. She's fine. Um, but... For the most part. More yeah. or less, like, I don't know. I think... I was but t- I think that... that Vague brand of comedy is kind of present in all of the movies she... I don't even know what kind of comedy Amy Schumer does, though. Like, I always hear so much about her. Like, Amy Schumer this, Amy Schumer that. She seems like a very prolific uh, actress, comedian, writer. Um, you know, she does a lot of stuff. And for the longest time, I had nothing... I didn't know what to think about her. I, just, I literally had no opinion on her. Then I saw what I considered to be, like, her... You know, her first feature, her big feature, which was Trainwreck, the Judd Apatow movie that came yeah. out a couple years ago. And I thought that was just like, it was exactly how I felt to Amy Schumer before and after. Like, so middle of the road, some really good parts, some really bad parts, fair. It was all right. Yeah, there was, there's one scene in uh, Trainwreck that I really, really laughed at for some reason, which was the where she makes fun of her sister's husband i think it is and his remember. sweater or something i don't remember the film that well i remember she just dances on a basketball court at the end and i was cringing really really hard i don't remember that part yeah bill Hader was in it shout out to bill Hader. that guy needs more roles oh yeah it's bill Hader that she was making fun of i think no that's her love interest in that movie unless she might have been making fun of him in the movie I'm not no sure. uh, fuck honestly i'm not sure she's but either way but there's anyways. some there's good parts about that so going into this that was literally still my opinion on amy schumer and I gotta say right now, I'm not an Amy Schumer fan. This movie did not do anything for her. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, geez, it could have been the writing, but based on what I've seen uh, from from and about Amy Schumer, this is very much reflective of of her brand of comedy, which is kind of gross. <laughs> have you ever seen Just her stand very up? Very gross. Chance? I saw a couple of bits, but uh, is only. It, is like, is it pretty good? Like, what is it like? I didn't. Is she, the I gross didn't... out humor. Is it part of that or? Okay. Well, I I read a very biased article about her a long time ago, um, and it was talking about how she stole some jokes, and then I watched the clip oh, of like the that jokes too. that maybe she stole or whatever the fuck. Um, so that's it. That was a scandal. That's the only. Minute. That, yeah, I don't know. If, yeah, fair enough. Who so I'm not going to say yeah. too much about her stand up because I'm not educated enough on the topic. You but. know what? You're right, though. This is gross out humor. Like, there was actual. There was actually parts of the film that I was disgusted in, to be honest with you. Yeah, I turned away. Like, I, I actually like covered. A couple of times. I covered my face at one moment. Like, I didn't. Yeah. Like. <sighs> It's this the, wasn't blood and gore gross. It was like fucking play with your, I don't know, like <laughs> test your limits gross. It, it's kind of like, it, it, we were saying, it's toilet humor. It's completely toilet humor. It's the kind of thing that like 10-year-olds laugh at, you know, and then it's yeah. kind of 
looked down upon. And I mean, not that we're some like highbrow comedy gents. Like I liked Fast Eight. You guys can go back. I thought that movie was hilarious. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, I like all kinds of movies, but I still think there's a level of. Uh, effort that I think can go into a joke or a comedy act and it feels as if this is just right because I think you can be gross assed. and still be funny like in Zach and Mary make a porno when when totally good there's example. some shit that sprays over like there she's constipated or something and she shits on someone's face that was disgusting but also it was fucking well done and funny I thought well you know what? it's funny the the last movie this guy produced not directed was Mike and Dave the need wedding dates and we I both, like that movie we both yeah really thought the movie was pretty good so yeah. I would say surprisingly like one I love I love Mr Efron Efron's a great dude yeah love um, Zach Efron uh, but uh, I love uh, uh, um, I can't even remember her name, but safe, she's in safety, not guaranteed. Aubrey Plaza. Aubrey Plaza, yeah, she's great too. I like Aubrey Plaza. Um, yeah. yeah, that was a good movie, you know, but also kind of could have easily been sort of like this movie with some of the humor they used. Yes. But it did it in a more subtle way, or when it did it, it, uh, it felt, you know, necessary and wasn't like too over the top, I think. Mm-hmm. Which, um, you know, I think worked. Because even in that movie, you had like... Uh, a lot of people doing crude things. I remember, like the two girls were kind of like slobs in their house, kind of like. Yeah, they were they were slobby, and then there's a scene where like uh, what's his name, uh, Kumail. Uh, I don't I don't know his last name. He's one of the guys in Silicon Valley and that stuff. He does like a like, oh, like a swinging uh, ass bump massage thing, yeah, which that was maybe funny. it. Was, I thought it was funny, was like, funny. but I thought it, like it could maybe be perceived as gross. I mean, to but some I certain think people, it, sure. You know, I think subjective. it was, yeah, it was, uh, I think it was on a, a nice spot on the line. I don't Snatch, know. Snatch, though, there's literally a scene where a tapeworm was removed from her mouth. Yeah, uh, for no apparent reason, by the way, because it cuts out halfway through part of a scene, which leaves you thinking that they fucking decided to cut it out of the movie at the end for whatever reason and leave the other part. Uh, it's this pointless thing that happens. It's, basically it's uh, sad though because like i'm watching i'm looking at this guy's filmography the guy who directed this is jonathan levine and he's done some really fucking good movies he did um the night before which we both really liked yeah surprisingly that was a really good one the yeah Sandler, i really and, uh, i did really like the Jessica night before Lowe, and then he also did warm bodies an okay movie the zombie one with the dude from skins remember that one a new take on yeah i do remember new take on a zombie movie 50 50 great film yeah 50 50 is, is a soft play and Honestly, fuck, I did not realize he directed this, but this is a really good movie. Um, I think this is one not a lot of people saw, but I highly recommend checking out is The Wackness. It stars right. Josh Peck from Drake and Josh. Oh, shit. And um, also, uh, fuck, Ben Kingsley, uh, Mary-Kate Olsen. Um, I highly recommend The Wackness. That's my that's Kyle's recommendation for the week. It's a very good film. Check out The Wackness. Um, I, yeah, I, I love this film. I think it's... it's well, I haven't seen it in a long time, but when I first but, saw it, I thought it was great. You're, to- you're totally right. He's done some pretty decent stuff he like some slightly going good down stuff like i don't know like this is a weird i said this as soon as we started right before we started rolling actually and i said this is the kind of movie you got to make so you can make other good films you know yeah i feel like right. it's like a studio decision like okay we're gonna cater to a specific audience and we're gonna release it on mother's day and it's gonna hit all the check marks and you know what sure we're gonna put a big budget on it why not but you know some things are gonna feel a little sloppy and we're gonna go all out with the gross out humor so right. that you know Hey, it might my, still catch the exactly. rest of that audience. It's going to land. But it's the kind of thing where... <laughs> Excuse me. If I went and saw this with my mom, I don't think she would enjoy it, to be honest with no, you. No, <laughs> hell no. My, my mom would have walked right the fuck out, if I'm being honest. There is a scene. So I, I want to bring up a little bit more about Snatched, and I don't think some of these will ruin it for you. Um, um, but there's a scene where Amy Schumer meets a dude that she's very clearly into... She goes into the bathroom, and uh, this is a scene that honestly probably could have been funny if they changed the focus of the details. Like, they basically, if they made it less gross, because the door is swinging open from another girl following Amy right. Schumer into the bathroom as she's, like, wetting a cloth, cleaning her armpits, and then cleaning her vagina. Oh <laughs> but... Classic Schumer, Very right? not, yeah, classic Schumer, but not very gracefully. Like, her fucking leg is on the counter, and she's, like, getting it. It's really gross, okay? It's, it's, a, we even th- thought it was grosser when she was doing it in her yeah, armpits. There was, I like, think a that, <laughs> like, sound. She, like, yeah, there was this super audible, like, <laughs> noise when she cupped her armpit. And I wasn't expecting, it was really jarring. It was kind of like. And it was almost a fucking close-up on the armpit. It was, uh, it's wa- just. You ever watch, was, like, Red and Stimpy? 
where it's like this kind of no. cutesy animated film show, and the next thing you know, like something like all the snot and boogers will come out, and it's really gross. It felt like that, except like not creative, right? And like, because I could see that scene being cool of of the door swinging open <laughs> to reveal the 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 guy she just liked there's watching comedic- her do something embarrassing, like I don't know, maybe picking her nose or maybe like yeah, like there's comedic value in that idea, but the way they executed it. <laughs> That's honestly disturbing. And I don't even think the act of her like cleaning her vagina or armpits is disturbing. It's just like the mannerisms in which she uses and the and sound the, um, that's the, used. The amount of fucking focus on it. Yeah, it's it's really weird and it's so off putting. And the rest of the movie like, has Even these if she just like pulled that. out like a douche and he saw like the douche and that was the funny thing, like that could have been way better, I'm going, I think. I don't know. I'm going no comment, personally. I, <laughs> I don't know. Like I, Honestly, I'm just trying to think of the ways that scene could have been funny because I think there's maybe something there, but I don't think it was so. super gross. Like That, to me, seemed like you were saying this. You're like, that's the kind of... I don't know, but you said that's about, about a different scene, actually, but that just seems like the kind of thing Amy Schumer like said, like, oh, I should add this in. I feel like that was a Schumer scene. Yeah. You know? There's another part in the movie where her boob just falls out. And you pointed this out saying that seems like a thing Amy Schumer just probably wanted to add in. And I totally yeah. agree with you. I feel like Amy Schumer was just like, I can accomplish my brand of comedy of being kind of like slobby, gross, uh, very open about my body and sexuality kind of thing. Um, but also show people my boob. Which like, in theory, there's nothing wrong with that, I guess. But the thing is, is it The feels, way that yeah. particular scene came off was not good. Like, not to say that, I don't know, because uh, there's gross comedians out there that I... Yeah, people use Think just fine, but people use gross out humor, and I think it just gets to a point where it feels old and tired. Yes. And I think you have to really use it lightly. And the reason it, we're even, I think, upset about this, I, I'm gonna, I don't, I don't mean to, I don't mean to speak for yourself here, but I feel the reason we feel this way is because then they try to shoehorn these really sincere, heartfelt moments, and it gets to the point yes. where it's like this is just, this is just a mishmash of bullshit going on right now. Like, how yeah, do I they, really exactly? They totally switch focus into oh but me and my mom's relationship and we can fix it and oh i am a good person like, even I, though i've been playing a shitty as fuck person the entire time I to be funny i completely expected that from this movie like i was yeah. like this is a movie about a mother and a daughter we're gonna get some cheese at the end at the middle yes you know, it's gonna happen but yeah. um i don't know i guess i just didn't expect by the time that shit showed up in the film it felt so like an afterthought to me to give the film its credit, I was like, okay, this is a crude, disgusting film, and they're going with that. Yeah. And then, you know, this is the inconsistency not- in film I always talk about, and fucking King Kong, go back to it if I have to. It's like, pick a side, you know? You can't yeah. try to do both unless you're going to, if you're going to half-ass both, you can't do both. Like, contrast is good, but like, let it, it's a delicate balance, I think. Well, and I mean, I get that they're trying to, you know, uh, propel the characters a little bit and try to, you know, develop them as individuals in the film and have them, you know, have this mother daughter connection completely makes sense to me. I understand that, but yeah. to the film's credit, they were doing that in a slightly, in a comedic way. It wasn't my brand of comedy. It didn't really hit it for me personally, but you know, they stuck to an ideal and they went with it for a good 45 minutes of the movie. I'd say maybe 40 minutes. I don't know. And then they tried to do this like hearted, uh, you know, but you know, you don't really actually want to spend time with me. You only come to me when you need me. And like, yeah, I just, it just, it felt so the big fucking uh, switch there all of a sudden. It's like they snatched the emotion from the film. Oh, dude. <laughs> hey. um, I don't know. The, I was just, but I will say uh, Goldie Hawn, pretty damn good in this movie. I'm gonna yeah, go she ahead. was fairly good in this movie. Yeah, I absolutely. think she was okay. Like, I want to bring up the fact that I can't, I don't remember his name, but in the opening, one of the earlier scenes um the boyfriend of amy schumer breaks it off uh with amy schumer and parts of that i thought were pretty good actually i thought part of that was pretty funny i thought the boyfriend did yeah, good actually guy? i thought amy schumer was a relatively funny in that moment too i didn't have a, a, a much of a problem with, with yeah, her like, at all there the opening scene i was kind of like oh this is amy schumer's kind of, kind of comedy and it was kind of fine for me for a minute yeah and yeah you're right that kind of like, like that was scene. That was pretty good. I thought it was pretty funny. Like, it wasn't... It wasn't fucking... Again, it wasn't my brand of comedy. And, 
you know, this movie isn't targeted towards me anyway, but no. yeah, I yeah. still thought it was funny. Like, I could still appreciate well, the, some humor there. And I think that's totally, you know, that's to me, that's what we're trying to do here. We can we can talk about the moments in which we think we're humorous or could be humorous to other people. And then we're just in the right, we're just as much in the right to also say which moments we thought were lackluster and didn't work. Yeah. And why this film didn't work in moments. And I don't know. Like, it's Snatch is the kind of film you watch a trailer, you're gonna understand what it is. It's yeah. not. It's not gonna. It's not gonna blow you away. It's not gonna happen that way. Mm-hmm. And, but um, you know, yeah, this is gonna be a little bit of a longer cast because we started with the intro. So yeah, it, that's fine. But I, I think it's not much more really to talk about Snatched. I don't know if I would recommend this film. Um, but Daniel, do you wanna? Give your rating, I guess. Rating for the film. Um, geez. Keep in mind you once gave Fast <clears throat> 8 a 1 out of 5. Just keep that in mind. You know what, dude? I don't know. This is like... Mm, fuck. This makes me want to go back and change my rating for Fast 8 and give it a 1. Point I thought that was harsh. I wanted to give it like... I should have given it like a 1.75. We don't and then do 7.5s. C- we do halves. <sighs> okay, halves. well, Jesus. Maybe I, I should have <laughs> given it a 1.5 then. God. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Like, I was like, whoa, dude. Like, that's rough. That's okay, well, rough. <laughs> if I could I go back and change my fucking rating, <laughs> I would change it to like a 1.5 at least. Is that canon now? Is and that then canon? I would give this one a 1.5 or maybe 2. Whoa, you're going to give Snatch a 2? I was going to, well, I'm leaning towards the 1.5 here, I, I mean, want to say. It's your opinion, man. Just It's up to you, but I'm, I'm shocked. Dude, honestly, I laughed way more in this movie than I did in Fast 8. All right, well, that, that seems fair enough. That's fair enough. So. That's where it's at. Would you recommend the audience out here to check the film out? Uh, our audience, probably not. Um, if you think we really suck, then <laughs> maybe this film's for you. I don't know. Wow. It's, it seems harsher than I remember. The more I think about that, that's... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, like... If you think we suck, this movie's for you. It's like, go to hell. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. I, I laughed at this movie, but I don't also... I also don't think you should pay $15 to go see it. I would say, yeah, if this gets uh, a free... If you could watch this for free somehow, I sure. <laughs> okay, well, uh, hear me out. So, would you say it's a good mother daughter film? No, it's a horrible mother daughter movie. Don't watch it with your that mom. That seems like that might be the thing people may have done this weekend or might want to do next weekend. Honestly, I would say like watch it with your girlfriends in the background while you're getting uh, having a drink, or um, yeah, I think that's I think that's the that's the group I would recommend this movie to that might yeah, get a kick out of it. Yeah, I'm giving Snatch a solid one out of five. You're giving it a one. Yeah, I thought this movie was terrible. To be you're pretty you. down to Fast Eight level right now. No, Fast Eight. I stand by my rating for Fast Eight. It's a great film. Well, enough. It was great enough. Three out of five. I stand by that. Um, yeah, this movie's terrible. I don't think I. I, I, I think I, that was the first words I said. It was the worst movie I've seen in a long time. I was yes, trying to think of something. I was literally trying to think of something worse than this, and it would have to be Fifty Shades Darker, which we weren't doing ratings at that time. Right. But. Or principal. Well, actually, see, I felt the same about this movie that I did about that principal movie with Ice Cube. Oh, Fist Fight. <laughs> I yeah, kind of like. Fight. I like Fist Fight more than this, hands down. I think they're both because in the... Fist Fight was so wacky. Fist Fight made no sense. Like it had this like <laughs> had this view of the world that was so obscure that like <laughs> I kind of thought was funny. Like the. The way they took everything so seriously about the super principles, I thought that, like, in hindsight, that's kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> when I was watching it, I was like, this is so strange. But <laughs> in hindsight, I could get into it. This movie, I don't think... This movie felt like they had... Like, it's kind of film where you don't write a film, you write scenes. And you just put all the scenes together and hope they work. Right. And it's... I mean, I guess that might work in some instances. I'm not I'm not a screenwriter. I don't know. And then but, maybe Amy Schumer said, this seems funny and we should add it. And no one disagreed. <laughs> and I mean, of course, we don't even know if Amy Schumer said this. This is totally our assumption. We are, I stand just, by yeah. that to a degree, but, you know, we don't know. We just, we just don't. Uh, more or less, though, yeah, I don't recommend really anyone to watch this. The only reason I wouldn't give it a lower score is because my benchmark for a lower score is Fifty Shades Darker, and to me, that movie... Sh- it's hard for me to give a movie a zero. Like, I don't think I could give a movie a zero, because if it was... You got out there and tried? Exactly. You went out there trying, and you made it, and it was put in theaters for a w- audience. Yeah, wide enough for cool. us to get out and see it. So. That's, you know, yeah. fair enough. I re- can respect that. Um, and that to me is like the lowest amount of respect I can give you. And then that's where you are. Right. And this movie, I 
yeah, you know, I laughed. There's moments I did like about it, and I think the premise had potential. I do think that. I just think it was executed entirely terribly. I was not right. impressed with you one bit, and I would. I would not recommend Snatched featuring Goldie Hawn. Do we say Goldie Hawn? Do we tell her to say this is yeah. this movie? <laughs> we, you sh- shout out to Goldie Hawn. I hey. feel bad for her because she is kind of just in the flick and she's actually pretty good in it, I think. She had a good performance. I thought it was uh, charismatic. Charismatic. Okay, we, we're a little bit over time, but we're going to keep going because I have one last question for you. Okay. Okay, I'm just curious right now. I'm thinking to myself, like, who would play Amy Schumer's role better? In this film, like if they were to cast someone else in the film, uh, do you have anyone off the top of your head? Alongside Goldie Hawn? Yes, I think uh, Goldie Hawn stays because I think she's actually a really good fit for the role. And not that Amy Schumer isn't bad casting, I just really think she overtook the film in and in, in it into a direction that I don't necessarily think was there from the get go, which we kind of talked about in this episode. Yes. So, um, yeah, do you have any others? I don't mean, uh, yeah, I put you on the spot here, I'm sorry. But. No, 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 that's okay. Um, or do you have one in mind? Because I'm gonna think about it for a second. Well, you know, it's funny. Like, I was like, my immediate, my immediate like comparison with Amy Schumer is Melissa McCarthy. I mean, you brought this up earlier, yeah. kind of to a degree. And um, but she's not really, you know, she's not that. She's not exactly. She's not younger. You know, she's not exactly. It. You can, I, I don't really buy her as an inexperienced person. If that makes any sense. Yeah, I don't so, buy her as like a. Like I wouldn't buy her in this role, so I, I yeah. don't think I would put that. As I'm, I'm really like I'm racing my head. That's kind of what I'm asking. I'm trying to think. Like to me, the more as we talk this out in the episode here, I'm thinking. Seems like Amy Schumer was probably our biggest problem with the film. I'm starting to realize. Yeah. It, or at least we're putting that a lot of that on her, rightfully or unrightfully. I don't know. We'll you know, just our opinion. I guess all, but all the all of the grossness that we didn't like about it was it associated it with, with her. her. So, so maybe yeah. we're not saying that it's totally her, but we're saying that that's the element that happens well, to be associated with her. We'd be lying to ourselves if we said it, it didn't have something to do with her. There's yeah, I don't like Amy Schumer, but I so I said to you in the theater, like, I, yeah, I told you this before. I was like, you know what? I'm on the fence. We'll see how it goes. Came out not liking her. In midway in, I was like, yeah, I, don't, I hate Amy Schumer now. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of another option. The first one that comes to mind is uh, that one girl who's in... Uh, that singing movie. Oh, she's also in Mike and Dave Need a Wedding Date, but not Aubrey Plaza. It's the other girl. Um. Oh, Anna Kendrick. Anna Kendrick. Yeah, I could buy her okay. ditziness. Okay. You know, um, I could see that. I could see that. I can't buy her. Like, I don't think she would pull off any grossness either. I think. No. Like, Anna Kendrick is also a good actress. Be... She's a good actress. I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think she's a good actress as well. Um. Yeah. You know, I could. I could see that. It's just. It's weird, right? Because it's like you. You get the feeling. She directed Ghostbusters too, right? Um, Kitty Depold or Depold, I'm, I'm not sure. Yes. And you get the idea that she probably wrote that script kind of with the actors in mind again. Yes. To a degree, I would say. To some degree, yeah, for sure. Um, and I think like, which is probably a good script writing technique as long as you think you could get the actors yeah, right to, uh, to seems, some degree. I'm starting to get the feeling though that she relies on that too much. Yeah, I think that might just be what it is because I don't think we ever gave our thoughts on Ghostbusters last year, but I thought it was okay. You really did not like it. I, I really did not enjoy it at all. I thought it was just like so whatever. Like it just it's the kind of movie that I, I've, I honestly forgot it existed when we saw it on the <laughs> wiki right now. I forgot that happened. Yeah, <laughs> so. You know, that's kind of, I th- knew I was going to feel that way. I was like, this is just the movie that I have no feelings about. I just don't care. <laughs> but yeah. uh, uh, and, but I bring that up only because I do think that, that maybe she's just trying really hard to write f- for the actors in the roles because a lot of these big studio, um, uh, a lot of these, these big productions will have a rough idea, a really rough idea, because in the wiki it says that this movie's based off the writer's experiences with her mother. Or her her connection with her mother, and that could mean anything. Yeah, that could mean they're close, or she had bad knees, like Goldie. Totally. Mark's very, very so very for all we know, she had a rough script, pitched it, and they're like, okay, great, we're putting Amy Schumer and Goldie Hawn in it. Yeah. She's like, oh shit, okay, I gotta write the rest now. Yeah. You know, so I don't know. Again, another speculation, but that's just how I feel watching this film. Still one out of five. Don't watch it. That's where I'm at. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> go with a one point five out of five. Yeah, that seems. Um, I mean. You know, you said it right, Dan. Like, this is not a movie for us. So, you know, take that as you will in terms of how we scored it. But that's just where I'm sitting at it. I don't know. I think there's not much out to fucking watch. That was another thing about last week, how there was an episode. There's not much to watch right now. Yeah. We were kind of late on the Guardians of the Galaxy. Having a tough time finding stuff to watch. like, I think we probably would have both fell asleep in King Arthur. I'm pretty convinced. That was some... I would have... I'm looking... Like, looking at the posters... 
King Arthur and Snatched, I probably would have went to Snatched yeah. in any circumstance. King Arthur just looks like a fucking snooze fest. It does look like, like a fucking, fucking snooze, snooze fest. fest. Like, I don't even know. Like That's the kind of move. That's a Ghostbusters. Like, if I were to watch it, I would instantly forgot about it. Like, I, yeah. I don't think. And you know what's funny is I like fucking this, the, the story uh, of uh, the Sword in the Stone. Yeah. And like, there's an not? animated movie out there that I Big really flick. dig, too. I mean, King Arthur, it's a classic, classic story. It's been done a lot of times. It's done been it's done really well. It's been done really bad. I guess we don't know how this one is. For all we know, it's great, but fuck, did it look boring. Yeah, fucked. <laughs> and I've seen the trailer quite a few times. I've clicked out of the trailer a few it's times, too. It's just like, it's Guy Ritchie, too, and he always is, like, really hyper-stylized with this shit for no reason, and I don't know. I'm just not into it. That guy's married to Madonna, and that always, it's, I think Madonna might, like, slightly torment people into insanity. Hot, you hot think so? You think he's like slowly dying? Well, hear me out. Like my sister was a huge fan of Madonna growing up, so I know a lot of Madonna like trivia, and I think Madonna is like so um, like high on herself that like you would probably go insane if you spent longer than two hours with her. I really think. Would that. you say she's high on a feeling? Do 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 do. We'll leave that episode here, guys. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching. This has been off the cuff. We'll be back next week with another episode. And if you enjoyed this week's episode, please be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on SoundCloud. Hit all the social medias, Facebook, Instagram. I know we've been kind of lacking on that, but trust me, we're going to come back with a force, with a fiery passion. It's going to be there. Uh, you know, hit up iTunes, all the podcasts, subscribe to the RSS feed, all that shit. You guys know where it's at. So, Good game. Um, yeah. Anyways, um, I'm Kyle. We'll be back. I'm Dan. Adios.